Omar ibn al-Khattab has a very interesting story because when he came to Jerusalem, there was no bloodshed, there was no fighting. In fact, Jerusalem was in such, you know, was in such turmoil that the leaders welcomed his coming and welcomed becoming part of the Islamic empire. And this is something that's well documented. But they told, because it was, it was tradition that the Khalifa would stay in Medina, the stronghold, he should not leave his city. They told uh, Abu Ubaidah Jarrah, they said that we will not give the keys to the city except for your leader. We will only give it to him. So he's got to come and he's got to take the keys himself. And so basically what we find is that Heraclius organized a welcoming ceremony for Umar bin Khattab to be handed the keys of Jerusalem. He invited the patriarch of Rome as well as the bishop as well as the bishop of Jerusalem. In fact, leaders from the Jewish community were there, ambassadors from all over the world were there, and he spread out for Umar bin Khattab a red carpet that was that spanned over 2 kilometers long. So it was a long red carpet, you can imagine. When he just starts making his way there, he just starts making his way there, he's going to already be stepping on a red carpet to show him a, a good welcome and to, you know, because they heard of his justice and to uh, truly give him royal treatment. And also beforehand, they also invited for the two leading Muslim generals, Abu Ubaidah al-Jarrah and Amr bin al-As radiallahu ta'ala anhu, to be in attendance when Umar bin al-Khattab comes so back then you didn't have first class you know, seating or anything like that, but I'm sure they sent them some first class horses or first class camels. They took care of them. They furnished their stay in Jerusalem. They even provided them garments. So there was a special type of garment that you needed to wear at this historic ceremony of handing the keys of Jerusalem over to Umar ibn al-Khattab. Now Umar ibn al-Khattab, if you read about him, and by the way, he's the 52nd most influential man in world history according to Michael Hartman. Uh, that's the book of the 100 most influential people in the world. A man of justice, a man for whom you have actually a statement in the United Nations Charter. There's actually a statement in the UN Charter from Umar ibn al-Khattab. How can you enslave a man who was born free? That, he was the first one to say that. So he's a man whose justice is well known, who, who history has been kind to. And Umar ibn al-Khattab was a person of, of much simplicity. Big, huge man. Okay, gigantic in the true sense of the word. The description of him is that if he sat on a horse, his feet would touch the ground. It's a huge individual, huge human being. Very intimidating look because of how big he was. And he set such a, I mean, he set such a tone of justice during his rule. I'm talking about in, in the rule in, in Medina. So Umar ibn al-Khattab, you know, he asked the people in Medina, he said, you know, should I go there to take the key or is this some kind of setup or some kind of plot? Am I going to be killed? Uh, is this a wise decision? It's never wise for the leader to leave his base. They said, you know what, for this case, it's okay. He went out there, he took with him one servant, and they had one camel, and he made a deal with the servant beforehand. He said, on the way there, I'll ride for half of the time, and you pull me, and then you ride for half the time, and I'll pull you. So they took turns, 50-50, and then Umar ibn al-Khattab, as they were approaching Jerusalem, the servant was on the camel and he was the one pulling the camel. Not only that, but right before they got to Jerusalem, he fell into a mud puddle. So his clothes got covered in mud too. And he's pulling the servant and he's covered in mud and he has 17 patches in his cloth. And, you know, everyone is waiting there with their best clothes. You know, everyone is waiting there to give him this grand royal reception. And here he is walking in. He's got mud all over him and so the servant at least tells him as they get to the red carpet it's two kilometers long he says you know i think we should switch now Umar al khattab said a deal is a deal 50 50 it's still your turn so but you know you're kind of going in to take over the greatest city in the world you know <laughs> no 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 you stay on the camel we'll keep walking Umar al khattab comes walking with the camel and the people are waiting and the people are standing out and they're waiting out, out their windows to see who this great leader is. And they see this man coming and running with a camel with dirt all over his clothes and 17 patches. So Abu Ubaidah and Amr, they were the two that were invited to, to, to be part of this reception. Abu Ubaidah, who himself was a very simplistic man but recognized the situation at this point. 
Abu Ubaidah, you know, he gets upset with this. He goes and he walks out to Umar ibn al-Khattab. He's like, I got to take care of some business with the leader before he comes and takes the key. And he says, you've embarrassed us. You know, you've humiliated us. You know, these people are all dressed nice. We want to, you know, you've got to show that you're a strong leader. You've got to show your, your best clothes and things of that. You've embarrassed us. And Umar ibn al-Khattab, he became upset. And he said, نَحْنُ قَوْمٌ أَعَزَّنَ اللَّهُ بِالْإِسْلَامِ We were a people who God gave dignity to through faith, through Islam. And if we seek honor and dignity and glory through any other means, we will surely be humil humiliated. Meaning, I'm not that superficial person I used to be. Umar was known before he became Muslim to be an extremely well-dressed, uh, wealthy man. He was one of the few literates, few people that could read in his time. Uh, you know, they, did, they didn't expect that from him. But he said, we seek our glory through faith. We don't seek it through subjugating anybody. We don't seek it through, through some pompous you know, display. We seek it through faith. And so he received the keys from Heraclius. And the people were shocked. And then the bishop of Jerusalem took him to the church of nativity. He gave him a little bit of a tour of Jerusalem. And he took him to the church of nativity. And while they were in the church of nativity, the call for prayer came. The call for prayer came, for the noon prayer came. And Umar ibn Khattab was in there and, and he knew it was time to pray. And the bishop of Jerusalem told him, he said, look, why don't you just go ahead and pray here? You're the leader. You know, you don't have to go outside and pray. You can just pray here. It'll be an honor for us. And Umar ibn Khattab, he said to him, he said, no. He said, because I'm afraid that Muslims will come generations later and claim this is a masjid, this is a mosque, because this is where I prayed. So he walked out of the church, he walked down the steps, and he prayed right there. And then lo and behold, 400 years later, they built a mosque there called Masjid Omar, the mosque of Omar. <laughs> so he was right, he, could see, he knew how history works with these things. He didn't want people to claim that church as a mosque just because he prayed there. Uh, not because it was impermissible or not because there was some theological objection to that. He just wanted to give the people their rights and their respect. He also made the famous Pact of Omar, which essentially guaranteed the rights of all citizens there, guaranteed the rights of people to practice their own faiths. Christians and Jews not only were allowed to live in peace, they were allowed to judge each other by their own law. So they were not subject to Islamic law. They were allowed to keep things according to their law. Out of, out of sensitivity and out of justice towards them. So it wasn't like, you know, again, the Bible was thrown away or the Torah was thrown away. In fact, if a situation came to Umar in regards to a public act of, of lewdness or disobedience um, from a Christian or a Jew, he would consult the rabbis or the priests and he would ask them if this was something that was allowed in their faith or not. So it was complete justice, complete honor. Mm-hmm.